Good morning. I hope I'm on. Welcome to Healing Waters Worship Center. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? And I want to make sure I tell you this. First and foremost, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> I'm reminding you to tell your wife that. It is good to be back in the house of the Lord. We, we missed you guys when, while we were gone. Um, I feel like it's been forever. We've been uh, way out with the, the Rangers one weekend and then out with family the next. But uh, we're glad to be back. It's good to be here in the house of the Lord with you. I want to share a couple of things with you about uh, some things coming up. Next weekend we have kind of some community things happening on May 14th. We have a community cookout at 11 a.m., it's going to go to 2 p.m. If you want to be a part of that, uh, see David Thomas, and he can find you a place to serve there. Also, right after that, we go to Time Out, which is uh, a, a time for uh, people from our community to have a break from their kids and kids to have a break from their parents. So that's coming up on May 14th, next Saturday. And then on May 21st, there's uh, something for the ladies and something for the men. So the ladies are meeting here. It's a uh, ATP 31 meeting for the month. It's going to be at 9 a.m. And the guys have an opportunity to do some work. We're going to have a ranger work day, and uh, we're going to work on our, our campsite and uh, do some uh, preps for a ranger day event. So if you have any questions about either one of those, for the ranger day, you're going to see Landon, or for ATP 31, you can see Pastor Amanda. On May 22nd, we have a special uh, workers' leaders meeting here at the church. It's going to be immediately after service, and uh, there should be some information coming out soon via email on that. And I, I want to share with you, um, you see it in your bulletins, it's a, a special event. There's two of them, uh, one in, in June and one in July. It's a um, personality seminar. It's a uh, time for you to take a test to uh, learn a little bit about yourself. So uh, that's coming up. And if you have any questions, you can you can uh, look for the email. There's gonna be more information about those coming up. and Or you can just call the office and they'll tell you everything in advance if you just can't wait. Okay, <laughs> all right, amen. So um, you didn't come to listen to me talk about upcoming stuff. We came to worship our Lord. So it's time for that. If you guys will stand up with me. Dean, good job. Very fast. I didn't think a guy his age could get up that fast. <laughs> He's younger than I am. <laughs> Amen. So um, let's uh, take this opportunity to welcome the Lord into this house and invite him to hear our worship and to uh, meet with us today. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this opportunity to come into your house. God, I pray right now that as we offer to you worship, as we sing, sing about your great works, that you meet with us. God, that you, uh, that you come and you bring comfort. God, that you come and bring help, that you come and bring healing. Father God, I ask right now that you meet with us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Amen. Aren't you glad his love never runs out?
want to take a moment, just a moment, to, one, thank our mothers. Ooh, there it is. <laughs> thank our moms for the love that they show us. I want to pray for the moms out there because God bestowed a love to them to show to us. Amen. And we always take that for granted, but we need to be reminded that our moms sacrificed it all for us. Just like Jesus, the Son of God, sacrificed everything for us. They sacrificed something for us. Tracy has asked us to pay for um, Terry Fernheimer. Did I say that right? Thank you. Uh, possible lung cancer, continued your strength and blessings. Beth Bridges is having surgery on Tuesday. Okay. That God will be with her. Jimmy Baines has asked us to pray for grace for a procedure that she's having as well. I want to also pray for our men and women there in the United States. We're living in a sort of confusing time and also troubled time. I want us to pray for our believers and those who are fighting in Ukraine. There are a lot, there's a lot of stuff going on out there that we don't know about, but God will be with them. Let's pray before the Lord. Father, once again, we give you glory and honor and praise for who you are, God. God, we ask you be with Terry as she is going through this possible lung cancer, that you give her strength and blessings that that let her know that everything's going to be okay. God, I ask that you be with Beth Bridges on Tuesday as she has surgery. God, I ask that you give her strength as she goes through this. God, we pray for Grace Baines, Father. This procedure, whatever it is, that God, you will be with her. God, we pray for our mothers. God, we thank you for our mothers. Because the love that you show for us, you show to them so that we can see it. God, I pray for our United States. God, I pray for our surrounding areas that you will be with the people of the world. God, we pray for Ukraine as different events are happening and chaos is going everywhere, but God, you are able to bring that back into order. God, I pray for those people there, the ones who know you, even the ones who don't know you, that you protect them, that you give them strength, that you give them comfort when there is none, Father. God, I pray for the people in this building right now that, God, you will answer their prayers. They may not have written it down. They may not have wanted to keep them to themselves, but, God, you know what it is. So be with us. Continue to put a shroud of your presence in this place as we continue to worship you, God. We love you, Father, and it's in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Let's continue amen. to worship the Lord. There's victory in Jesus today and every day. Amen.
and his purpose. Amen.
something that I asked them to do in the first service. And that is, I want you to sing like you're the only person nobody's in the room. I know what you're thinking. But I don't sing on key. Nobody cares. It's okay. And I reference this young man a lot, not because he's my nephew, but because of the example he sets. Most of the time, many times, he's in the early service, and he sits right over here. His name is Bryce, and he's in our kids' church. And when he sings, it is like everything he's got, he is singing it, and he's just letting it, letting it all go. And so I want us to sing that together. And my challenge to you is to sing it as heart-filled and heartfelt and as loudly as you possibly physically can do. He said, well, what if I squeak? Nobody's listening. But what I will say is if you're around someone and you don't hear them sing, just kind of go like this. And, no, I'm kidding. Don't do that. We're not going to do that. That would be terrible. Funny, but terrible. But I want us to lift up. Listen, God gave us worship for numerous reasons. One is to connect with him and to adore him, and he's worthy of worship. But there is a physical and a spiritual connection and release that takes place when you lift your voice. Anybody ever felt like sometimes just screaming? Yeah? Well, we're not screaming necessarily, but we're exerting energy through our voice. So I want us to lift our voice and, and go back to that verse that leads into it, and we'll just sing that together. Um, I forget the, the, his body, the bread, his blood, the wine. And can we just sing it together and just, uh, just let it go? All right, go ahead. We'll follow. His body, the bread, his blood, the wine, took in and poured out for love. The and the veil was torn. His love so Yeah. 
your name. There's none like you, God. And we thank you, Lord, that you're high above everything, bigger and higher than the storm and the crazy. And sometimes the gift you give to us in catching our breath is in using our breath to praise you. We are grateful to you. You've done more than our own human mind could even begin to acknowledge your good. So thank you. Now let the peace of your presence settle on your people today. Provide for them that which only you give, that hope, help, and healing by your presence. We thank you for who you are through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. What an amazing Jesus we serve. Amen. We're going to continue to worship the Lord this morning. I know, I know people say all the time, why do you put it where you put it because it's a part of worship and giving we do that it's a part of our DNA but other part of our the other part of our DNA is being able to connect with people you know today is Mother's Day right I know you know that I know you came in and got some special things for moms when you came in the door today we'll talk a little bit more about that later but I want you to be able to step across the aisle and here's what here's what's important what we're noticing the last couple of weeks is the amount that's in the first service is now trending to be about the same in the second. So you're, you're, if you're in the second service, you miss those in the first and vice versa. It's important to pay attention to who you see and who you don't see. And then to make it a point to try to connect with people throughout the week, it's important in the body of Christ. But this moment is a moment that you can connect with somebody in the house and let them know it's good to see them in the house and how wonderful it is to be together and to wish your mom a happy Mother's Day. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the privilege we have to bring to you your tithe and our offering. Thank you, Lord, that we have an opportunity to be obedient to your word in these things. It is worship to you because in many cases it is a sacrifice. But we also worship you in that we connect together. Glorifying your name is also etched in our fellowship as we lift the countenance of a brother or sister in the house today. Would you be glorified by the connectivity and the exchange of hope, help, and healing through the kindness, through the embrace, and through the words spoken by your people one to another in this place today. And we'll honor you forever for what you do. In Jesus' name, and again, in all God's people said, amen. God bless you this morning as you connect with somebody. In death, in life, I'm confident and covered by the power of your great love. My death is fading, there's nothing that can separate my heart from your great love. In death, in life.
I'm thankful for the opportunity we have to fellowship together and to be together in the house of God. Uh, I've had several of you ask me, and so I just want to... <laughs> How many of you know that information in the church kind of travels in a rapid fashion? Did you know that? Church information travels in a rapid fashion. So, uh, to avoid any of the proverbial uh, rumor mill, uh, let me just, it's not a bad thing, let me just say to you, as the fellowship kind of, you know, I, I want to make sure you hear, hear me tell you this. So, yes, this last week, um, I was out of the office this last week um, due to some major back problems, okay? Why does it sound like I'm getting ready to take off? Uh, through some major back issues this last week and um, had to undergo some MRI, an MRI and have some potential other things that may be on the horizon. For those that don't know, yes, I have a lot of spinal things. I've had eight spinal surgeries over the last several years. I'm fused in multiple places, have a lot of nerve issues. I'm just not going to go into all the details, but I've had numerous people ask me, so you weren't in the office with this week. What's wrong? And I'm like, well, I better say something from the pulpit because, you know, in, in this community and not just in the community. So it, it kind of had me at a really bad standstill this week. Um, Pastor, you look like you're standing pretty well. Yes, there's a lot of pain and I can fake it pretty well a lot of the times. But uh, just, just so you know, so that keeps you from talking about it later on and you hearing it directly from me. So, but nonetheless, happy Mother's Day to all of our ladies and moms in the house and um, I want to give a quick shout out. Uh, today, moms, when you came in the door, uh, you received a couple of things. One, uh, I want to thank Q Daddy's. Q Daddy's is one of our local restaurants. Uh, they partnered together with us, so every mom should have received a uh, gift type card today for something free the next time you visit that wonderful place of barbecue. And. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so they're a they're good Christian family, and they, as you know, they've helped us with a lot of our church projects around here, so, uh, you know, that's, they're just wonderful folks, so we want to thank them, and so hopefully, moms, you'll enjoy uh, that gift, and then secondly, you should have received a ticket when you came in this morning, and that's just something at the end of the service today, uh, when my wife is uh, concluding uh, the message that she's going to share with you today, something we've done on Mother's Day for the last many, many years uh, with get, having her to be able to share with you and to talk to you from her heart, uh, we will be giving away uh, six, seven or so, some, six gifts, and then uh, it's just going to be a lot of stuff. It was a lot of fun in the first service. We drew tickets, and it was a lot of fun. But just something just to, to be a blessing to you moms and to just say thank you. As we continue on this morning, I want to read something to you. It's not the thing that I wanted to read uh, to you today, but with a compu complete computer loss this last year, uh, there's a lot of things that I lost, but I was able to find this, and I want to read it to you moms. And just so you understand how it's going to flow from here moving forward, I'm going to read this to you. And then on the heels of this, I'm going to invite you to watch a video. I will tell you that the video you're going to see is going to spark emotion. So... If you're around tissue, I, I would advise many of you to take advantage of the Kleenex that are near or should be near your row uh, because it will be quite an, an emotional video as you are taking through the scenes uh, of a family from the images of a mom over the years. Uh, so I just wanted to, to let you know that. And then on the heels of that video, Amanda will be coming and sharing the word of the Lord with you. But I want to read this to you. It's entitled, When God Created Mothers. It says, when the good Lord was creating mothers, he was in the sixth day of overtime. And one of the angels appeared and said to him, God, you are doing a lot of fiddling around on this one. And God said, well, have you read the specs on this order? She has to be completely washable, but not plastic. She has to have 180 movable parts, all replaceable. She has to run on black coffee and cold food and leftovers. And can I add, for many of you moms today, energy drinks. <laughs> okay, I just had to add that in there. Or some of you say, no, oh, mine's Pepsi. Okay, Pepsi. No, mine's Mountain Dew. Okay, Mountain Dew. Mine's Coca-Cola. Uh, all, uh, yes, to all of that, okay? She's got to be able to run on that. She has to have a lap that disappears when she stands up. She has to have a kiss that can cure anything from a broken leg to a disappointed child's love affair. She's got to have six pairs of hands. The angel shook her head slowly and said, six pairs of hands? There's no way. 
It's not the hands that are causing me the problem, God said. It's the three pairs of eyes that the mother has to have. That's on the standard model, asked the angel. God nodded and said, yeah, she's got to have one pair that sees through the closed doors. When she asked the kids, what are you doing in there, when she already knows. She has to have another pair right here in the back of her head so that she sees what she shouldn't see, but what she needs to know. And then she's got to have the third pair right here in the front so that she can look at her children, even when they goof up and tell them, I understand and I love you. Without so much as uttering a word, God said the angel, touching his sleeve very gently, get some rest tomorrow. And God says, I can't yet. I'm so close to creating something that's so close to myself. Already I have one here in front of me who heals herself when she's sick, <laughs> can feed a family of six on one pound of hamburger and get a nine-year-old to stand under the shower. The angel circled the model of the mother very slowly and said, nah, she's too soft, mm, but tough, said God excitedly. You can imagine what this mother can do and what she is able to endure. The angel says, can it think? I laughed in the first, why'd you laugh? It's that, no. <laughs> Absolutely she can think. Not only can she think, but she can reason and compromise. Finally, the angel bent over and ran, her, ran the finger across the cheek of the created mother and said, oh, I found a problem. There's a leak. I told you you're trying to cram too much into this model. It's not a leak, said the Lord. It's a tear. What for? said the angel. Well, it's for the times of joy and times of sadness, times of disappointment, times of pain, times of loneliness and times of pride, times when she has to let off the steam that no one else will ever understand. You're a genius, said the angel. And God said, no, I just created a mom. Take a look at this video. And Amanda will be up here in just a few moments. go to church with jelly all over our face, can we? Hmm? Oh, my, oh, my goodness. What are you doing with that snake? You go put that snake back in the hole right now. Oh, good, buddy. Yeah. Way to go. All right, buddy. Hey. Oh, oh buddy. You okay? You all right? Come here. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord. Hey, Mom. Mommy needs just a minute, please. Hey, Mom, I think you look pretty no matter what even when your hair looks really weird. <laughs> oh, oh, 
tell Mom. Go straight there. And come right back. Stop it. Mom? Dad? I asked Beth to marry me. Well, what'd she say? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the family. I'm so happy for you. Hey, Mom. Where's that grandbaby? <laughs> oh, did I see you? Oh, yeah, nice to see you, too. You hey, Mom. Oh, it's okay. Oh, it's okay. Oh, it's okay. You did great. What's that? The children. You did really great. I always knew you'd be a good dad. But you did really. Mom, what are you doing? <laughs> of course you are. Come sit with me. You know, I was thinking just the other day about what a wonderful mom you are. I mean, God, God really blessed me with a great lady. You're... You're my mom. You've always been there for me. <laughs> Even when I didn't want you to be. <laughs> and nobody ever believed in me like you do. Thank you. I love you, Mom. And I love you, son. morning. We told you you needed tissues, right? Now that we're all crying. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers in the house. I celebrate with you this morning. Um, I'm very thankful for the opportunity to come up here and bring the word to you this morning. And I pray that um, we glean something for it, from it. I don't think it's just for the women in the house today. I think it's for all of us. Um, and I pray that it blesses your heart um, as well. Um, I want us to open up the word this morning to um, Matthew chapter 15, starting in verse 21. We're going to read through verse 28. Um, and um, we're going to talk about the faith of a Canaanite woman this morning. Let's read the word. Then Jesus left Galilee and went north to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And a Gentile woman who lived there came to him, pleading, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, for my daughter is possessed by a demon that torments her severely. But Jesus gave her no reply, not even a word. And then his disciples urged him to send her away. Tell her to go away, they said. She's bothering us with all her begging. And then Jesus said to the woman, I was sent only to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. In verse 25, she, she says, but she came and worshipped him, pleading again, Lord, help me. Jesus responded, it isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. She replied, 
That's true, Lord. But even dogs are allowed to eat the scraps that fall beneath their master's table. And the last scripture I'm going to read this morning is Jesus' reply to her. And he says, dear woman, Jesus said to her, your faith is great. Your request is granted. And her daughter was instantly healed. Father in heaven, we just love you today. We thank you so much for all of your wonderful gifts. Lord, we thank you for our mothers, Lord God, because we wouldn't be here without one. So God, we thank you, Lord, for who you are. Lord, we thank you for your word, Lord. I pray that you would help us to have ears to hear and eyes to see and hearts to respond to you. God, I pray that every word that comes out of my mouth would be the words that you would have to come out of my mouth, Lord God. Lord, I pray that your people, Lord, would hear your word this morning, and they would apply it to their lives, and they would walk in faith, Lord, as this woman did. Lord, I thank you and I praise you. I honor you and I bless your holy name and yours alone. And it's in your name we pray. And everyone said, amen. So this morning, as I was coming in the door, and I told this during the first service, I'm going to tell on, I'm going to tell on Dean a little bit. He said, what are you preaching on this morning? Are you preaching this morning? And I said, yeah, it's Mother's Day. We usually do this, you know, every Mother's Day I get up here and, and talk. And, and I'm, I'm a, more of a teacher than a preacher. My husband's the preacher. I'll give that to him. But um, um, he said, so what are you preaching on this morning? And I said, oh, the Canaanite woman. And he said, yeah, you're kind of running out of women there in the Bible to, to teach on, right? And I said, no, brother. I said, there's lots of them. <laughs> there's a vast um, expanse of uh, what the Word of God says about women. And so I want to talk to you today for a few minutes about some of the things that I saw in this scripture. And I hope that it will um, spark something on the inside of you. No doubt you've heard this story before um, about this Canaanite woman and her great faith. And I want to give you a little bit of the backstory that happened before um, this story takes place. It's kind of interesting to me. I was talking in between services with one of our other sisters about this story and how this is kind of sandwiched in between these two great miracles that Jesus did. There's, there's two accounts of this scripture or this story in the scriptures. It's in one in Matthew and again in Mark. And um, it's interesting to note that they don't call her by name. They just call her by who she is, a Canaanite woman or the Syrophoenician woman. So they give her, um, they give her the identity of where she came from, right? They don't give her a name like Janet or Rose or... A Joni or Amanda, they give her the name of where she came from. Um, and so we don't know a whole lot about this woman other than the fact that she's from Canaan or outside of Jerusalem, outside of the Jewish um, nation. We don't know anything else about her other than the fact that she has a demon-possessed daughter and she's coming to Jesus. Um, that's all the backstory we're given, but she, this, this little story here is sandwiched between two greater miracles, and a discussion that Jesus has with the Pharisees. And so I want to talk about that for a few minutes, and then I want to show you some things that I saw about this woman that I think applies to us and where we're at. And so I told you there was these two miracles that happened. There was the one um, where Jesus feeds the 4,000 people, and then he walks on the water, and then on the backside of this particular story that we're going to talk about today, he feeds 5,000 people. And then there's also this discussion. If you go back a few verses, there's this discussion that Jesus has with the Pharisees about clean and unclean. Everybody say clean and unclean. And so there's this discussion that he has between them and this debate. It becomes this heated debate between the Pharisees and the scribes and Jesus about the fact that his disciples don't wash their hands before they eat because there was this ceremonial thing that the Pharisees used to do before they ate. There was all these ceremonial things that they did to make themselves clean. And Jesus basically told them, in a nutshell, because I'm not going to preach on this, 
in a nutshell that it doesn't have anything to do with cleaning your hands. That doesn't what makes us clean. Our heart is what makes us clean before our God. It, what is on the inside of our heart is what makes us clean before God, not what we do on the outside. We can clean something up and make, thing, make something look pretty on the outside, but if our inside is messed up, we got to get that right too. Okay, so Jesus is really tired. How many of you have ever been really, really tired before? Like you've had one of those weeks where you just had all kinds of stuff going on and um, you've just had it had it up to here. Well, Jesus is at that point in his life and in his ministry. He's he's fed 4,000 people. He they are the throngs are coming after him. They are heal us, heal us, heal us. Do this for us, do that for us. They he is he is tired. He is weary. I can kind of relate to Jesus sometimes where I'm like I just want to go someplace and not be me for a few minutes, okay? Um, and so that's what Jesus, that's where Jesus is at at the beginning of our story. He wants to go someplace that nobody knows him. In fact, in Mark's gospel, he says, I want, he goes to, he tries to go to a house where nobody will know that he's there. But guess what? This little ruse doesn't work because the people still keep coming, and that's where we find ourselves where this Gentile woman comes on the scene. And she comes there, and she's seeking after God for him to do a miracle, for Jesus to do a miracle in her life. And um, I think it's interesting that Jesus has this conversation about clean and unclean, and then we see this Gentile woman. And you know why I think it's interesting? Here's why I think it's interesting. Because the Jews didn't want to have anything to do with the Gentiles. In fact, the Jews thought that the Gentiles were unclean. And if you think about it, the Canaanites, particularly the Canaanite people, were ones that Israel had fought against their whole existence. Remember, if you go back, way back into the Old Testament, when they went into the Promised Land, who did they fight against? The Canaanites were one of those people that they fought against. And so they did not like the Canaanites. So Je Jesus is going to this town, this Tyre and Sidon, to get away from people and he's just had this debate about clean and unclean, and then he meets her, this woman. And right off the bat, there's a few things that stick out to me about this woman. Number one, she knows who her Savior is. She is a Gentile. I've already told you that. There is no reason why she would know other than the fact that Jesus has been talked about in the countryside, right? That she would know that Jesus is the Savior. You want to know how I know this? Look at what her response to him is. In verse 22, she says, Lord, Son of David. She calls him Lord, and she says, Son of David. She, she greets him with his messianic name, okay? Jesus is messianic because he is the Messiah foretold, right? He is the Messiah foretold in the scriptures. He is the one that will come and save us all. He is the one that will come and save us all, and he must be of the house and lineage of David. First Samuel, if you turn over there, or 2 Samuel, I'm sorry, 2 Samuel 7, 12 through 14 says this, For when you die and are buried, this is David and God having a conversation. And when they have this conversation, God is telling um, David that his, his throne is going to last forever. And he's, gonna, he's talking to him about Solomon, his son, but he's also foretelling to him what's going to happen as far as Jesus is concerned. He says, I will raise up one of your descendants, your own offspring. I will make his kingdom strong. He is the one who will build a house, a temple for my name. That's Solomon. We know that he builds the temple. And I will secure his royal throne forever. That's him talking about becoming, becoming Christ. I will be his father and he will be my son. 
If he sins, I will correct and discipline. He goes back into talking about Solomon and with the rod like any father would do. So she calls him out as his with his messianic name. This reference, and Matthew is talking, remember, Matthew is talking to Jews here. He's talking to people who would understand what this is. And it is so interesting to me because even his own people didn't recognize who he was. But yet this woman who's a Gentile who doesn't really, who, who wouldn't have known anything about the Messiah really, calls him Messiah. Does anybody else find that interesting? I find that interesting. He, she recognizes him as the Messiah. She has no affiliation with Israel. She doesn't know. She doesn't, she's only heard of him. In fact, his own disciples don't even know that he's the Messiah because that doesn't happen for two more chapters. If you go through and read the book of Matthew, Peter doesn't call him out as the Messiah for two more chapters. They still have to see a whole bunch more stuff before they believe that he's the Messiah. I want to ask you something today. Do you know who your Savior is? Are you serving your Savior? Or are we looking to God or are we searching for another? This woman was looking to God. Are we looking to God or are we searching for another? She was looking to God. She knew who he was. Number two. She knew that she needed this, his help to save her daughter. She says, my daughter is demon-possessed and suffering ter terribly. Have mercy on me. She pleads with him for mercy. She knows that there is no one else that can fix her daughter. There is no one else that can bring healing to her daughter but Jesus. She recognized not only that he was Messiah, that he was king, but she and that he had he had the real physical um, ability to have authority here on earth. But she knew that he had spiritual authority as well, that he had spiritual authority over demons, and that he could set her free. In my lifetime, I've not seen um, I've only seen demon possession a couple of different times. I can't even imagine what this mother must have gone through on a day-to-day -day basis with her daughter being demon-possessed like this. They would thrash themselves. They would throw themselves in the fire. They would be sick. They would, be, they would say terrible things. It, it was awful. It was an awful experience for her. It was an awful experience for her mother. Speaking to the mothers in the house, when your child is sick, doesn't it hurt your heart? I don't know about you, but it hurts my heart. I can't imagine what this mother must have gone through for years with her child demon-possessed. But she knew that the Savior was the only one that could set her free. And then during this time, knowing that she knew that he was the only one that would set her free, she knew also that she needed to submit to him. And so she falls down in worship and reverence to him. So we see this picture of her coming to him, and she's yelling out to him, and she's crying to him, and then she falls at his feet. And then Jesus is silent. And she continues to call out to him, continues to worship him. Look at verse... Um, Verse 23, Jesus did not answer a word, and so she's continuing to cry out. She's continuing to make a spectacle of herself, and her, his disciples are like, God, you know, Jesus, do something about this. Do something about what's going on right here. They either want, they either want him to pick her up and, and, and tell, or tell them to pick her up and let her go, or they want her, him to do something for her so that she will be quiet. Because she's drawing attention to them. And the whole purpose of them going away was so that they wouldn't draw attention to themselves. Remember that? Psalms 27, 14 says, Wait patiently on the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently on the Lord. 
This woman waited patiently while all of this was going on between the disciples and Jesus. And Jesus is quiet. Jesus is not saying a word. And the disciples are talking to him about, hey, Jesus, you know, do something about this. And she's waiting patiently. She's waiting patiently for an answer. And he's quiet. Psalm 62, 5 and 6 says this, My soul waits in silence for God only, for my hope is from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not be shaken. She sits at His feet and waits. Is our first cry, I'm going to ask you this question, is our first cry to the Lord or is He our last resort? When we've messed everything up. And I'm going to ask you a further question. I want you to think about this one. When we don't get the answer we want or in the time that we want, do we take our toys and go home? Do we stop praying or going to church when things get difficult and God is silent? Are we pleading with the Lord? Are we running after the Lord with all that we have for ourselves, for our children, for our church, for our community? Are we willing, are you willing to circumvent whatever obstacle might be in your life to get to him? This woman did that. She circumvented everything. She circumvented the fact that she was a woman. She circumvented the fact that she was a Gentile to walk into the midst of a group of Jewish men. You know, after church today, we're going to go sit down and we're going to have a meal together as a family. And we're all going to sit together. Well, we can't all sit together because I don't have a table that big. But we're going to sit together together. In, in a fashion, right? And you're probably going to do the same. But that didn't happen a lot of times. Women sat in one place, men sat in the, in Bible times. Women sat in one place, men sat in the other, right? This woman walked into a group of men. She knew what she needed. And she knew that he was the only one that could give it to her. She was bold enough to stand up for her belief. Just like this woman who pushed past her fear, we need to be able to push past fear and intimidation, whatever that looks like. I don't know what it looks like for you. I know what it looks like for me. I don't know what it looks like for you. Psalms 21, 27, 1 says this, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I encourage you to go back and read the entire chapter of Psalms 27. It's good stuff. I want to turn for a minute. I want to talk about Jesus' interaction with this woman. Remember I told you he was silent to her, which is totally uncharacteristic of Jesus, completely uncharacteristic of him. He normally is the first one to speak up to whoever he's talking to. How many of you know that God doesn't do anything without a purpose? Without a purpose. And in this, there was purpose. In this silence was purpose. And as I'm reading this, this week and preparing for today, the more I read this, the more, honestly, the more I got mad. Um, if I'm just being truthful, if I'm being who I, who I am, right? Because he's silent and he doesn't even acknowledge her first request. I can just see it. He doesn't even look at her. He doesn't acknowledge that she's there. He's, he's, he's tired he wants to get away, and here comes this woman, and he just, wants, he just wants silence. So he's silent. But I'm here to tell you this morning that God's silence is not always indifference or even ignorance of your situation. 
it's, it's not just because God doesn't speak doesn't necessarily mean that something is wrong. It means that you have to keep silent yourself and keep praying and keep worshiping and keep on the steady course. Don't abandon the course just because of silence. We don't like silence. I don't, I, I personally like silence in, in degrees, okay? I like silence in the morning when I get up and I can do my devotions and, and so forth and so on. I like silence when I'm working sometimes. When I've got something I've really got to concentrate on, I like silence, okay? But for the most part, we as people do not like silence, right? We have to have the music blaring when we're driving down the road. We have to have, um, you know, the, 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 the TV in the background blaring, you know, or, or in the background is background noise. I have to have music to go to sleep at night. Otherwise, I can't, the ocean sounds, you know, white noise to go to sleep at night. So we don't like silence. We don't like to sit in the silence. But it is in that silent period where God can do things in us. And then he gives her a response. So she cries out to him. He's silent to her. She cries out again. And he finally gives her a response. But it's not the response that she wants. Or that any of us would want. He tells her that he has only come for the house of Israel. Now, we know that Jesus did come for all people, right? Everybody can agree on that point? Yes. Okay. So, but initially he did come for the house of Israel to redeem his people back to him. And, and, and then came and he died for all people, but he did come for the house of Israel. Okay? To redeem his people back. In fact, in Matthew 10, 5 through 6, which is a few chapters ahead of this one, or before this one, he tells the disciples when he sends them out, he says, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter the city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. His, his design was to come to Israel so that they could see the Messiah, and so that um, God could come through that. And so this is not the, the, um, the, the answer that she wanted. But still she sits. Most of us, if we're told what we don't want to hear, what happens? We get up and we walk away. Not this woman. This woman sits. She continues to worship. She continues to speak out. Then he calls her a dog. And at first glance, this looks like, oh, my goodness. He's calling her, a, he's, he's, he's insulting her. Would, if I got up here this morning and insulted you, like called you a name, what would most of you do? Pray for me. I need it. I need it, sister. I need it. Now, most of us, if somebody calls us a name, what are we going to do? We're going to get up and we're going to walk away. Right? We're going to walk away. Or we might say something witty back to them. Right? I paper your glue. Whatever bounces off of me sticks to you. Right? We might say something witty back to them. And she does. She, 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 cho she chose to speak, right, to him once, twice, three times, and what she says to him in return is interesting. It's very interesting. She says, yes. She sa he says, it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. This is Jesus is te telling her this. And this, this word, though, if you look it up in the Greek, it's more like a puppy, right? It's not really an insult. But if you look at it at first glance, it looks like he's, he's, he's calling her a name. 
but he's really trying to, remember, he just had a discussion with the Pharisees and the scribes about clean and unclean. And he's trying to teach them a lesson, and he's trying to bless her, and he's trying to teach, teach the world a lesson at this time. And she's coming to him, and she says, yes, Lord, even the dogs eat to, get to eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. I want to ask you a question. Are we so bold in our faith? Are we able to stand up under rejection and possible criticism? Wherever that criticism may come, it might come from your spouse, it might come from your work coworker, it might come from yourself, it might come from wherever it comes from. Are we able to continue to persevere? She asks, she spits, she spits right back at him. Are we able to believe for ourselves the way we might believe for someone else? You see, in this statement that she makes to Jesus, it wasn't just about her making the statement to Jesus. She chose, chose to control what she could control. She chose to control what she could control. She calls back to him in agreement that, yes, she is a dog, but even the dogs get the scraps from the master's table. She understood her position, but she also understands that Jesus has enough for everyone and that even a crumb of his power will heal her daughter. She couldn't control who she was or what she was born into any more than she could control Jesus and his mission here on earth. You can't control who you were or what you were born into. But she could control her response to him. You can control your response to Almighty God. You may not be able to control what you were born into. You may not be able to control your past, but you can control your response to God and let him heal you of that past. She acknowledges that he is his master and suggests that he can serve whomever he suggests. That he can, and, and he can choose where those crumbs lie. And in this moment in time when he's outside of the land of Israel, he can choose to do what he wants to do. That's what her response is. It's clever. It's, it's witty. It's like my daughter who come, has a comeback just like that. I'm not, I'm not witty like that. She got that from her father. Um, I, 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 I just, I, it takes me a while. My mind is going like this, and it takes me a while to bring it, bring it around. But my daughter is, whoo, sharp as a tack. Okay. But her purpose is to get her daughter's healing and mercy for herself. Because see, here, here it's changed. She came for her daughter, but now she's asking for herself. It's twofold. She's, she came for her daughter, but God's going to touch her and minister to her too. She could have chosen to get angry. Most of us would have done that when we got insulted and walk away. She could have chosen to give up. She could have when she saw all those men standing around Jesus like that, she could have said, oh, "Okay, no, I'm not going to do that. That's there's too many people up there." Right? There's too many there's too much going on right now. I don't think I can walk up there and be a part of that what's going on. She could have said, "This is too hard. My past is too much. What I got going on at home is too much." I can't deal with this, but instead she chose to move closer. She chose to put aside her pride and put on the cloak of humility. Put on that cloak of humility. You know, most days I try real hard to control things. And I have found out I can't control anything. In fact, I have a sign on my computer. It's just a little post-it note. I read it somewhere. I can't even, I have a prize in a devotion or something. 
that I read one time, and I, I put it on a sign on my post on, on my computer so I could see it every day. Because I'm going to tell you, the people at, my, people at work sometimes will drive you crazy and run your patience really thin um, at the church, too, but we're not going to talk about that. Um, anyways, um, and it says, I have a sign. Uh, it says, God, you are God, and I am not. To remind me that God is in control. I am not. But you know what? I have found this out. What I can control is my thoughts. I can control my response to things. I can control how I speak. I can control how I react to others. I can control what choices I make. You can control your choice. You can control your speech. You can control your reaction. You can control the words that come out of your mouth. And anyone that tells you different is lying to you. This woman, for us, provides the perfect picture of control coupled with determination. She's a caring person. She worshiped God even before she had an answer from him. She did, she did not go there thinking she was going to, she didn't know that she was going to have that answer from God. She didn't know that he was going to say yes or no. Most of us worship God based on what he's going to give us or what he's going to answer towards us. We, we can't do that. She worshipped him even when she didn't know what the answer was going to be, what the outcome was going to be. When met with silence, she worshipped. She's relying on Jesus and not herself. This is a picture of a strong woman. She wouldn't let anything stand between her and what she needed to get to. She wasn't ashamed to humble herself. In fact, she knew that humbling herself before the Lord was going to leave this lasting impression. Because we don't know her name, but we're still talking about her today. So it's this lasting impression. She believes that the Lord can heal her daughter and, in taking all the necess and is taking all the necessary steps to make this healing a reality. She is the example of great faith. You know, there's only two times in Scripture that Jesus says something to people about their great faith. And I think it's interesting to note that both times that he says it, they're both Gentiles. One is this woman right here, and the other one is the centurion soldier. Her faith was great because it was unlikely. Her faith was great because it was something right in front of her. Her faith was great because she persevered. You need to persevere this morning. I don't know what somebody's going through this morning, but you need to persevere. You need to persevere. You need to bring people around you that will help you persevere. Her faith was great because she was clever. Her faith was great because it was tested. You see, James 1 and 2, 2 through 4 says this, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. You want to lack nothing? That end of that verse, you got to do all the other stuff, which means you got to go through the trial, you got to produce the steadfastness. You got to let steadfastness have its full effect. You got to let silence come in that you may be perfect, complete, lacking nothing. I'm closing in a few minutes. Elizabeth, if you'll come play me something. I want to ask you a few questions today. I've asked you a couple throughout the throughout this whole message. I want to ask you where you might be at today. 
This woman, she understood that this day was her day. She didn't know if Jesus was going to be there again. She didn't know if he was going to venture outside of Israel again. She wasn't guaranteed that he would come back to her little town. She didn't have a car she could get in and drive to the next revival, right? She, she, she knew that Jesus was coming there and this was her day. The scripture says that today is the day of salvation. 2 Corinthians 6, 2 says, As God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, In the time of my favor I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. I tell you now is the time of God's favor, and now is the day of salvation. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not. We're just not. Can't, I could go down a whole nother rabbit trail with that one, but I'm not going to. Romans 10, 12 through 14 says this, For there is no distinct, distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Maybe you see yourself as pleading with the Lord for a situation this morning. And you've been met with what seems to be silence. Silence. I've been there. I think sometimes I'm still there. Where you pray and you pray and you pray and the answer doesn't seem to come. And you're asking the Lord why? Why? Why God? And he just says, be still and know that I am God. And to you, I would say this morning, wait on the Lord. Because the Lord is not ignorant of where you are. He hears your cries and he sees you. He sees you. And there is a purpose in the silence. Jesus was trying to draw that faith out of her in the silence. He was trying to draw that faith out of her. He was trying to draw that steadfastness out of her. Because that's the rock that won't be shaken when the next trial comes. Do as Psalms 27 states, and in the meantime, worship as this woman did. Worship as he did. With like what the pastor said, with, 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 with abandon, with all that you have, with every ounce of energy you have. Worship him. And in the middle of that, that's where he can come. God's silent. You don't be silent. You worship him. Because that's where he can come. And maybe you see yourself as calling out to God for the first time this morning. That you need a savior. You know that there are things that are wrong in your life and you've been vexed with sin, much like this woman's daughter and her life were vexed with this demon. This woman knew and she believed that he was the Messiah. She believed even before the people around her did. You can believe too. All it takes is coming to him. I read it to you. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. That's all it takes. Maybe you see yourself as someone who doesn't have great faith this morning. Maybe you're looking at different ones, maybe here in the church, maybe not here in the church, I don't know, but or you're looking at different ones and you're saying, oh, gosh, that person has great faith, or that person over there has great faith. And 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 I don't have great faith. I don't have faith like this woman did. I, I can't, I don't have faith for this. 
Paul says to us in Romans again that God has given us faith. Romans 12, 3 says, For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each one of you. He has already given you faith. It's already there. It's already there. You just have to learn how to use it. You just have to learn how to use it. Remember this woman, she had a choice. Are we going to use sober judgment? Are we going to think of ourselves more highly? Or are we going to humble ourselves in faith and use that faith? We have a choice church we have a choice we could get offended and get bruised and get upset or we can get over it and circumvent those circumstances and get beyond that stuff move forward humble ourselves before an almighty God who's given us the faith that's what exercising faith is. I don't have any more faith than Pastor Sandra does. You don't have any more faith than I do. God already gave it to us. Each of you has distributed it to us. We just have to learn how to use it. And we use it by reading his word and understanding his word and worshiping him and, 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 co and coming to be with believers and, and, and getting together and, and understanding those things. Help us, Lord. Help us. Let's stand. Let's stand before the God, before the God of heaven this morning. we honor you today we thank you for who you are Lord we bless your name we bless your holy holy name Lord there is no one like you I pray that you would touch your people this morning, God. I pray that you would minister to them, helping them to see, Father, who you are. God, help those that are standing in the silence this morning, Lord, to keep standing and keep waiting for you. If you need prayer this morning, I'd ask that you would come up front. Maybe you're in one of these things that I've said. I, I just feel the need to, I, I was going to just pray and keep on going, and we've got prizes for everybody, and, and we're going to draw tickets, but I just feel the need to, to do this. If you are in one of these categories, or maybe you're not, maybe the, maybe the Lord spoke to you through one of these things that I said this morning or the Holy Spirit spoke to you this morning and you just want to come and find a place to pray and, and humble yourself before the Lord this morning, I'm going to invite you to do that this morning. I don't know how else to, how else to say it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not an altar call person. I, I, I don't generally um, do this, but maybe you're, maybe you're in, that, in that spot where you're where you're in silence and you haven't heard the Lord in a long time and, and you need the Lord to, to speak into the situation you're in. Will you come up front?
And, and, and I just want to pray with you this morning. And then maybe, maybe, you, maybe you've never asked the Lord into your heart. Maybe, maybe, you, maybe you need the Lord to be your Savior. Or you need to turn towards the Lord. In, and, or maybe you have asked the Lord into your heart. And, and, or you've turned away from Him for whatever reason. And you need God to touch you in that way. And, and, and we want to pray with you this morning for that. Or, or, or maybe you just need God to exercise. You need to exercise your faith towards God this morning. And you need to draw towards him like this, like this woman did. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this open, this, this, this altar open for you. Will you just come? And we're going to just pray together for whatever that is, wherever you find yourself this morning. I don't know where it is, but maybe, maybe, maybe you just need a special touch from him because it's been silent. Or maybe you just need God to meet you as, as your Savior this morning. Maybe you need God to um, exercise that faith in you this morning. And will, will some of my leaders come and pray with, um, with these that have come? If you haven't, if you haven't come, keep coming. Keep, keep coming. The altar is open. Just let's find a, a place to pray with, with, with God this morning and worship him and, and, and just sit at his feet for a minute. Can we do that? Can we do that? God, I pray for these that have come, Lord. I ask that you would touch them and minister to them as, as you did for this woman, Lord. As you, as, you, as you ministered to her, God, I pray that you would meet these at the point of their need, Father. Lord, whatever it is they're going through, Lord, I pray that you would touch them and that you would heal them, Father God, Lord. That you would bring hope and help and healing to them, Lord God. Lord, I pray that you would meet them with, with your power and your presence, Lord God. Lord, I pray that they would be able to be, be able to wait on you, Lord, even in that silent place, Lord God. Lord, that you would be that stillness, Lord, for them, Father God. Lord, that you would strengthen them, I pray, Lord God. Lord, I pray that you would be faithful to them, Lord, and that their faith, Lord God, would be increased. Lord, I pray that you would strengthen them, Father. I pray that you would work your good pleasure in them, Lord God. Lord, I pray that you would work, Father God, only as you can do. Lord, I can't do anything. Only you can do it, Lord God. And so, Father, I pray that you would move on their behalf. I pray that you would move, Lord, in their situation. Faithful 
you, Lord, for your peace that surpasses all understanding and knowing where we are, even when we don't understand. If we're honest, many days you don't make sense. But we trust you beyond our own understanding. So, Lord, I pray that you would seal your word in every heart, those in the altar and those that built an altar at their seat. Seal your word and continue to let your peace reign. And Lord, thank you for our moms today. Bless them continually. But Lord, not just moms that have given birth. For motherhood is more than just a birthing. It is the nurturing, it is the care, it is the wielding and raising. It is the pouring into people. So thank you for moms that have done that very thing today. Bless them and thank you for a moment for them to catch their breath. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good word from the Lord this morning, amen. I know you're excited about this part, and uh, our kids are going to help us this morning, so here's what they're going to do. They're going to draw some tickets. They're going to bring it to me, and uh, if, you, if you're with us on social media, God bless you. We hope to see you again soon, and we'll go ahead and, and close that feed, but uh, join us in person. You'll like it. All right, here we go. You ready? All right, everybody got these tickets ready? You can't blame me if you didn't get your ticket. 